Hello everyone, welcome to our new episode of What's New in Dynamic Trains Observability Clinic Series. My name is Barak Ahmed Bulut. I work as a lead technical product consultant in Dynamic Trains. Today, we are covering version 279. I know many of you are wondering where Andy is, and there are lots of cool things you would like to learn from him. But unfortunately, this session will be in the opposite direction, as I am the only presenter today. Still, I will do my best. And we are trying different types of structures to improve our session quality. That's why you might see some changes or different faces in the upcoming episodes. In today's session, we are going to focus on three sections. The first one will be about our playground environments, which any of Dynatrace users can access and explore our capabilities. The second part will be about the latest version platform functionalities, which is version 279. And lastly, I will talk about our community and Dynet test resources. If you don't have a Dynet test user account yet and you would like to access the playground tenants, then you just need to sign up for a trial. If you already have an account, you can simply go out, go our playground environments. And additionally, our GitHub page contains lots of tutorials and hands-on training materials, which can help you to engage with our platform. For the ones who haven't used Dynatrace yet, that's how our platform looks like. You can access again our platform directly with URLs and QR codes on this slide. Sorry. Okay, so as I mentioned, this is the version we are covering today. On the left side, you can see some of our main components and manage deployment type documentation as well. But the focus of this session will be the specific version and these new features and enhancements. So let's start. The OS monitoring events. We introduced OS service monitoring events with the text meshed from the host entity where they originate. Here is an example OS event we see in our host overview page. As of this version, we will correlate the entity text from the remapped hosts, which will enrich the event detection. The next one is that we enabled the log metrics at storage in Grail, which means that the log metrics, as you see, are now stored in Grail and can be accessed and queried with Dynatrace query language. The next one is again about our log monitoring capabilities. We increase the log event content size to 10 megabytes. This is just a log events example where you can see from our uh, it's a demo platform. And here's a, a log event that created from directly from the logs. This is for, for information for the ones who haven't used this functionality yet. We also increased our disk anomaly detection rules, number of disk anomaly detection rules, which is now 1000, the maximum value. You will see the service increased DNS names on the Kubernetes service page. And here's how it looks like. It is available under properties and takes. Also on the right side, when you click on this property, you'll be able to easily see the DNS names property name and the value. We also introduced a new API to unblock auto updates. As you see from here that certain types of auto update faders block further rollouts of that version as a safety measure. We recently introduced these endpoints and specifically that you can use this one to get and delete the problems to unblock and auto update rollouts. On the infra side, again, we introduced alerting profile, profile property filter negation functionality. 
this is the button exactly that you can see that from here. So there will be no alerts if an event of a problem matches the property filter here. Okay, before going to this section, let's go to our environments. Okay, it's better. Well, this is the documentation, as I mentioned in the beginning of the session. And on the right side, you can see all these new features and enhancements. And by clicking in of them, you can just navigate directly to that page. So let's jump on our tenants. The first one, as mentioned, the, the log metrics are available in Grail. So here's a log metric example, which is called log coach DB, OS process error. Let's go to details of this metric. In the measures section, you see that we filter for events or logs that belong to a specific process group instance. And with the second condition that we are seeing that I would like to see, say, or I would like to select the logs only from this specific file path. And last, the, we are filtering the logs which have the status of error, as you see here. We can now access and query this metric data in Grail with the QL. Here's just an example notebook, as you see here, as you see. And this is the function, the time series function we are using here. We are just summing all these metric values and charting them as a line chart in this example. This basic query that calculates all these values of this metric. And this is for the last 30 days, I think that's that's value. We can easily see on these charts. So I think that's all that the experience itself. The next one is, again, the getting and deleting auto-update problems. So this is the endpoint, as you see here. You can access this page from the second, gener uh, second generation of the platform. And I think it's not available yet for third generation. Therefore, it might be, uh, it's better for you to a switch to an old version to see this endpoint for now. But it will be introduced also this third, 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 third generation. It's, it's very soon, I can say. OK, I think we can go with the next one. So in the alerting profile section, first let's see how we can reach out to this page. You just need to go to settings section and from settings application, you will see the alerting menu. And by clicking platform alerting profiles, you can define the conditions of your alerting profile. The new feature that I mentioned in the slides is called negates functionality, negates button in the property filters. To see the property filters, let's go a little bit up. You just simply need to click an event filter and change the filter problem resource as custom. Once it is changed to custom, the three different sections, three different options will be pop up and the property filters are the ones that we are talking today. And if I click on add property filter, here you can define the filters based on your needs and use this negate option to basically that, uh, get the opposite of these filters in your profile config configuration. Perfect, let's go to our slides again. This is the documentation updates uh, with DQL. So now we have split the DQL commands and functions pages into sub pages for each category for easier browsing. You see the DQL commands and DQL functions once you click on it, you will see also the sub pages of both these sections. You can now pin JavaScript source map files on settings 
web and mobile monitoring source maps and single files. Here is an example from one of our demo environments. And here is the pin section. You can easily see enable and disable directly from your tenants. Before going with the next update, let's switch to our environment again. I'm going to close this one. And now in the digital experience sides, just, uh, just want to show you quickly how we can see the source map and symbol files from our environments. It's mentioned on this also the slide that you just need to go to settings application again. It is available under web and mobile monitoring section. You will see source maps and symbol files feature capability. By going down a little bit more, you will see the JavaScript section here. Right now there is no example in the playground environments, but you can easily create and enable and disable the pint status of those simple files. Okay, let's switch again to our tenants. One second, please. Perfect. So the next one will be about getting user groups from Microsoft Entra ID with Azure Connector app. This new app enables you to programmatically get user group data from Microsoft Entra ID, which is formerly Azure Active Directory. For example, that you can use this application that to define teams for entity ownership. By importing team information directly from Entra ID, you ensure that the team data in Dynatrace is consistent with your organization's central administrative management system. So that's why it's a very useful update for us. And we will see also in our environment that have what we need to do to get this capability. The next one is also the connected to the previous one. Now with the new ownership action, we can import teams for entity ownership. We can import these teams directly from these two different resources. The first one is a user group data that has been retrieved from Microsoft Entra ID. And the second one is a JSON source. Here's an example of how we can add this, import these teams into Dynatrace. We will also explore this in our tenants. The third one is that we introduced Kubernetes annotations to link ownership teams with Kubernetes objects. This is an example deployment table file, and this is the data owner key, which we use in our environments. And we define our team here, which is called my team in this example for usage in Dynatrace. As we did for Kubernetes tables before, it's now available for the annotations as well. So it's, I think, pretty handy updates also with this version. Let's switch back to our platform again. I'm going to close this one. OK, so to get the user groups from your Microsoft Entry ID and accounts, you need to install the application, which is called Azure Connector. I already typed the name of the application here, as you see, and I already installed the application. But still, let's have a quick look at the application. You will see some screenshots here. And at the bottom of the page, you will have more information about the products and the technical requirements and also the release notes connection. Once you have this application, you just simply need to go to Workflows application. And from the Workflows app application, if I click a task button, on the right side, you will see Azure Connector app. To get these groups from your Entra ID, just click on this Get Groups tab. And these are the input fields that you need to fill to get this your team information directly from your Entra ID accounts. That's basically, that's all. And the next one, as I mentioned, is now with ownership application. The same logic here. 
to add this on shape application, please go to Dynatis Hub again. You can find the Hub application on the left side or available in Apps section. Once you install this ownership application, you will again see some screenshots which explains the application behavior and the capabilities. And again, at the bottom of the page, you will see more details about this app. As I already installed this application in my environments, I am again navigating to Workflows app. And from the Workflows app, I am adding a task one more time. On the right side, I can easily see the Imports Teams action, which is available in ownership application. So again, that by importing this team information directly from Entry ID, it helps you to have a consistent that organization data and uh, that matches with your own organization and directories easily. Okay, uh, anything else that I need to mention here? I think that's all. So let's switch back to the presentation. Okay, now this one is about our consumption and calculation capabilities. As you see here, the minimum memory size is four gigabytes for the gigabyte hour consumption calculation of physical and virtual hosts only for the following DPS capabilities. So we see full stack monitoring, runtime vulnerability analytics, and runtime application protection. Please go to this documentation to have more details and an example about this logic. I think that would be the better approach for you to understand the latest updates. The last one is now you can set up traffic management rules for HTTP-based traffic. To get started, you just simply need to click on this URL and it will direct you to the documentation. This feature is important for performance monitoring and troubleshooting by focusing on specific URLs, which you can get more detailed data where it is most needed. And it will improve the ability and diagnose and will resolve your issues in a better way, I can say. So to see this section from our environments, let's switch back to the browser and close this one again. And in application observability section, here is already opened. It is available in settings application again. And from the settings, you will find server side service monitoring section. And in this section, we have the URL based sampling capabilities. When you click on add item button, that's where you need to define a specific URL. You need to define the capturing rate here to have a detailed visibility of about your more important modern data. Or you can simply reduce the traffic data from your unnecessary endpoints. So that's basically it. Let's switch back to our presentation again. And lastly, as I mentioned, as I always try to mention it, please share your feedbacks, share, ask your questions in our Dynatis community feedback channel. You can find lots of webinars and trainings in Dynatis University. And lastly, please always use leave chat functionality, reach out to our Dynatis One team. We are here to help you with all of your questions. We can easily um, address your questions to different teams. So it would be nice, it would be really nice also for, for you to get a quick response in a couple of minutes about any of your Dynatis Red questions in, within the product itself. So that's all from my side. I hope this session was useful for you. Thank you for listening and I wish you a great day.